Yeah, so uh, this morning the Deputy Prime Minister um, said that any links between climate change and the current bushfire tragedy <clears throat> were the ravings of inner city lunatics. Is it fair to say that the government's internal view of climate change hasn't really moved on since Tony Abbott's stance on the, that the uh, so-called settled science, settled science of climate change was absolute crap? I'm going to uh, bring in Ross Garner. I know it's a highly political question, uh, Ross, but can you give us your perspective on it? Well, the science has been very clear since I described it all in my report 11 years ago for all the state governments and the federal government. Uh, uh, I was simply uh, absorbing into that report uh, what was coming out from the science, and it told us that if we didn't change the trajectory of growing greenhouse gas emissions then and greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere, then we were going to get the conditions for uh, difficult bushfires much more frequently and more and more frequently over time, and the bad, bad ones would be much worse. And unfortunately, uh, it looks like the science was right. Mm. Jason, do you want to talk to the politics of that question? Uh, I'm not sure what the politics are per se, Tony, but let me say, Michael... Well, the central argument in that question was that the government is still denying climate change, well, as that... Tony Abbott did. That was, that was okay. the question. OK. So... Um, Tony Abbott didn't deny climate change um, and the federal government well, does not... Well, you say the science was crap, whether that's a denial well... or not, <laughs> technically speaking. <laughs> so let me, let me leave that aside. But the... Um... You can't leave facts aside. No, no, uh, no, no, that's a problem, I agree. <laughs> but um, the, um, uh, the fact of the matter is that the Abbott government signed the Paris Agreement. That's also a fact that we can't leave aside. Um, this government accepts and endorses the science of climate change. We understand that the um, climate change is a contributing factor to the weather events that we are having, including natural disasters at the moment. There is no one in the government who doesn't accept that. Oh, really? So, yes, really? really. Well, there was, there was an LMP senator on television this afternoon saying the Bureau of Meteorology is manipulating data to suit their global warming agenda. Well... <laughs> Just this afternoon. I don't think that's true. If you're it referring is. to Senator Rennick, that's it's... not what he said. That's not what he said, Mark. And, I mean, this is what the Labor Party constantly tries to do. It constantly tries to say, oh, those in the Liberal Party are climate deniers because it suits your political purposes. And I thought you didn't want to play politics in the middle of a natural disaster. Well, I mean, he, actually, he's answering a question, to be fair, and I suppose it is a political question, but what about Michael McCormack's comments? Well, I thought they were ill-timed. I thought they were an overreaction. I don't agree with what Adam Bant did, uh, and I've said that about some of Adam's tweets going back to the Blue Mountains bushfires many years ago. I think they're very poorly timed, uh, and I think that breached, they breached that long-standing protocol I was talking about. Now, I think Michael McCormack, the Deputy Prime Minister, he could, have, he could have stayed above that and chosen to ignore it. I hadn't even seen Adam Bant's tweets until Michael McCormack rushed onto radio this morning to start an even bigger Barney with him. It seemed to me that Michael almost seemed to enjoy getting into this fight and I thought that was beneath the office of Deputy Prime Minister, frankly. And as I said, instead of the TVs tonight showing communities binding together to support all of those bushfire-affected communities across the country, instead we had a very unseemly spat between two federal parliamentarians.